dear students. So, in today's class in continuation with the last lecture we have derived the, uh, the hydrostatic equation and we have also understood the hydrostatic equilibrium which, which is simply dp over dz is minus rho g right. So, this is the equilibrium that means the force uh, the pressure gradient force is balanced by the earth's gravitational pull. A consequence of this equation is that the pressure at any height z is simply the, the mass of atmosphere multiplied by the gravity. That means the gravity the weight of the atmosphere that is existing above this particular height is, is the pressure. We know this very well right. Now, in today's class we will try to use this uh, hydrostatic equation and derive what is called as the hypsometric hypsometric equation. Now, here we define in this class we will define what is called as the geopotential. Geo. What is geopotential? Geopotential is the is the potential of the earth's gravity field geopotential is defined as the potential of earth's gravity field. Also, it is, it is negative of the potential energy per unit mass that means, it is negative of the potential energy per unit mass, per unit mass very well right. So, if you know the geopotential if you indicate geopotential with phi you can write the gravity as g is equals to del phi. So, so as to write g without a negative you define the geopotential as the negative of the potential energy per unit mass. So, it can also be say that said that if you want to rise some object if this is the earth surface and if you want to rise an object to this particular height. The amount of work done that is to uh, rise this object against the gravity is generally referred to as the geopotential. So, geopotential is the negative of the potential energy per unit mass. So, if you rise an object at this to this height the potential energy at this height is m g h right. So, the potential uh, energy per unit mass is uh, negative of this is generally called as the geopotential. So, you can write g is equals to del phi. So, any given thermodynamical system can always be represented in terms of its pressure, volume, density and temperature. So, you can combine these four variables and write that p is equals to rho r t or simply p alpha is equals to r t. We already defined alpha is 1 by rho that is volume per unit mass which is also called as the specific volume. Volume per unit mass is called as the specific volume right. Now, let us bring the hydrostatic equation which is dp over dz is minus rho g ok. Now, we will try to rearrange this equation so that we can uh, try to get the height or the geopotential of at a particular height ok. Let us see how we get it I mean what we will start rearranging this this uh, one by one. So, as a consequence of this hydrostatic equation we can write that d p over rho is equals to minus g d z. So, just rearranging this let us call this equation as uh, let us say as call this this equation as 2 g is equals to minus del g is equals to del phi or g is equals to uh, or g is equals to let us say d phi over d z just across one dimension the vertical dimension that means d phi is written as g d z ok. Now, be, before we get confused what I have done is let us call this equation as 1 this equation as 2. So, we have introduced uh, geopotential as the negative of the potential energy per unit mass right. So, if phi is defined in such a way the gravitational uh, pull the gra acceleration due to gravity phi g is equal to del phi 
the gradient of the this potential is just the gravity. So, g in one dimension across the height is d phi by dz that means d phi is written as g dz. Okay. So, this is one relation that we, we will use and the second relation is straightforward from the hydrostatic equation, equation. The hydrostatic equation I have got the density in the denominator and on the right hand side you have d f g dz. Right. So, we can, now we can equate 1 and 2 from 1 and 2 we can simply write g dz is equals to minus 1 by rho d p which is equals to minus alpha d p right since since p alpha is equals to r t we can write g dz is equals to minus r t by p into d p which is equals to minus r t d of ln p. We can take this relation to the next slide that is to say g d z is equals to minus r t d of ln p. Right. Since g d z is simply d phi we can write that d phi is minus r t times d ln p. So, what we can say is that see here one very important relation is d phi is g d z that means, the rate at which the potential changes with respect to the height is the gravity field right. Then the second important consequence is that the rate at which the rate at which phi changes with p right. So, this is what you see the potential the geopotential rate at which the geopotential changes at any given surface or at any given pressure will depend will depend only on the temperature it is straightforward I mean capital R is a constant. So, the rate at which the geopotential changes with respect to the pressure will depend on the temperature and the rate at which the potential changes with respect to the height is equal to the gravity right. So, these two are very important conclusions let us say let us call this equation ok. Now, that means let us now integrate this equation from uh, with respect to height let us let us let us integrate. this equation with respect to height. What do we get? Let us say the integration limits are z 1 to z 2 d phi is equals to minus r t integral again z 1 to z 2 d of ln now, temperature is uh, not a constant that means, as the height changes temperature should not be treated as a constant. So, temperature should actually be in inside the integral right. So, r times t d ln p or we can also write this as this equation in terms in the limits of pressure let us say if you take the pressure at a height z 1 to be equal to p 1 and pressure at a height z 2 equal to p 2. So, it should be t times d o of ln p right or we can write phi of z 2 minus phi of z 1 is equals to minus r times integral p 1 to p 2 t times d ln p. If you get rid of the uh, minus sign phi of z 2 minus phi of z 1 is equals to r times integral p 2 to p 1 t d of ln p right. Now, this equation is called as the hypsometric equation that means. So, what does this equation tell you where did we start and what does this equation tell you about the height and the potential right. So, we started 
we started by defining the geopotential which is the negative of the potential energy per unit mass and if you define geopotential you bring in the dependence of phi over z which is equal to the grid g right. Then you combine this equation with the state equation and you define g d z in terms of in the units of uh, temperature and pressure. So, g d z is being equal to d phi you can simply say that the rate at which the potential changes with respect to the pressure will depend only on the temperature. As a consequence if you integrate this between the suitable limits of pressure what you will realize is that the geopotential at a particular height the is equal to uh, geopotential at a particular height let us say uh, the difference between the geopotential at two different heights is equal to the uh, integral of ln of the pressure between P2 and P1. So, what we can say is that phi of uh, z2 minus z1. So, here the left hand side is phi z2 minus phi z1. So, what does this tell you? This tells you the thickness of the geopotential. I mean uh, if phi of z2 is a particular height and phi of z1 is a particular geopotential, this tells you the difference in the potential, the difference in the difference in geopotential at two heights. So, here the idea is not about the pressure rather this is still in the units of geopotential right, but at two different heights. So, the rate at which the geopotential changes is the gravity right. So, we should we should always remember that. Now, if it is the case then this equation is called as a geopotential. Now, at this point we can introduce what is called as we have seen what is geopotential we will now introduce what is called as the geopotential geopotential height. So, what is geopotential height? Geopotential height is the height of a particular value of potential or uh, the height which is normal the height of a particular pressure surface which is normalized with respect to the gravity at the sea surface. Okay. or this geopotential height is called is also called as the gravity adjusted height gravity adjusted height okay or we can also say that the geopotential height is the height of a pressure surface above the mean sea level. Now, the mean sea level is assumed to be at a pressure P naught. Okay. Now, and the, the most important thing is the, the, so here if you take the height of a pressure surface, so now you are assuming that the pressure is changing only vertically upwards. Yes, yes, now, you are saying that the pressure is changing with respect to height only vertically upwards at so at any given height. So, at any given height across this sir, across the atmosphere at any given height the pressure will always be the same any point and if you go vertically upwards only then the pressure will decrease right. That means, if you normalize this the height of this particular pressure surface let us say if it is at P at 100 kilometers. It, the pressure at 100 kilometers if you normalize it with respect to the uh, mean sea level then you call that particular height as the geopotential height okay so now you, what is geop so d phi is defined as the as g dz so we can integrate this and we can write phi at a height z by g naught is equals to z so the height is normalized now with respect to G naught. G naught is the gravity gravitational pull at the surface okay. or we can say that G naught is the global average global average at the mean C level. Okay. Now, using this in the hypsometric equation, so what we have is phi add z 2 minus phi at z 1 is equals to r times integral p 2 to p 1 uh, 
times T of D ln P. Now, we can write this equations and say that the geopotential height Z 2 minus geopotential height Z 1 is equals to R by G naught times integral P 2 to P 1 T times D ln P or more simply is equals to to G naught times Z 2 minus Z 1 is equals to minus R times P 1 to P 2 T times D ln P. We will take it to the next slide or we will say that Z 2 minus Z 1 is equals to Z T is equals to R by G naught integral P 2 to P 1 T D ln P. So, this equation is is called as the the hypsometric equation. So, this equation is called as the right very well. Now, what is Z 2 minus Z 1? Z 2 minus Z 1 is thickness of layer of atmosphere which separates which separates the two pressure surfaces at P 1 and P 2 that is it. So, now what you can see is that the thickness of this particular layer of atmosphere seems to be proportional to temperature right. So, what we, we can also define a temp. So, now you have so essentially the point the, the that you should understand is if you have two pressure surfaces. So, this surface I mean there is this if you define this to be a surface any point on this surface is isobaric in this this is isobaric surface that means any point on this line is at the same pressure. So, there are no variations in the pressure as long as you are moving horizontally, but there is a variation in pressure when you move vertically right. So, this pressure surface is defined at a pressure P 1 and P 2. Now, if if you have an atmosphere which is hydrostatic in nature that means, if this height if the pressure is varying as per this balance if you have such an atmosphere the hydrostatic balance imposes a condition on the pressure saying that if, if you have such an atmosphere the thickness of the atmosphere between the pressures P 1 and P 2 will will be given by this relation right. So, and the thickness seems to be dependent on the temperature. So, naturally if you have more temperature the it will lead to the expansion of air and as a result the the, the thickness of this layer will increase as, as it is evident from the equation itself right. Now, we with this equation we can now define the average temperature or the mean temperature of a layer of atmosphere that is confined between two pressure surfaces P 1 and P 2 as the average temperature is integral P 2 to P 1 d ln P divided by integral P 2 to P 1 ln P right. So, this is the consequence of the having this hypsometric equation. That means, if you have this equation given any two pressure surfaces you can always calculate how spatially uh, they are separate how, how with how much uh, what is the spatial separation between these two pressure surfaces right. So, with this mean temperature now you can also define. So, using this mean temperature now within this column of uh, atmosphere you can define the scale height capital H is equals to R T by G naught. This is R T by G naught. Okay. So, the thickness of a layer of atmosphere separated by two pressure surfaces is given by the hypsometric equation. Right. Now, if you substitute this scale height into the Z T equation, Z T is equals to now 
Now, you since you have defined the average temperature, the mean temperature, the mean temperature of the layer is not going to change with respect to height. You have already taken an average, I mean the temperature between these two pressure surfaces varies with respect to height. So, this variation is brought in by taking an average. So, it comes now out of the integral and you have P2 to P1 d of ln p. So, now z t is equals to r times mean temperature by g naught times ln of p 1 by p 2 or z t is simply the scale height times ln of p 1 over p 2. So, so this means I mean we are so as a as a result you can write you can summarize this as p is equals to p naught into exponential to minus z t by h right. So, it naturally follows I mean this uh, so the approximation of the hydrostatic equilibrium along with the geopotential and the so we have combined these three equations. So, d p over d z is equals to minus rho g the second equation that we have been able to combine is p alpha is equals to r t the third equation is z 2 minus z 1 is equals to minus r times by g naught temperature of into long p p 1 to p 2. So, combining these three equations we have been able to realize that the pressure will indeed still valid to have this exponential behavior right. So, as long as the temperature is not changing with respect to height. So, so this, te this temperature coming out of this integral only allows you to have this relation right. So, if t changes with respect to height then it becomes complicated. So, now that is the reason that you define an average temperature right. Now, using this hypsometric equation we can we can get a very important result very important uh, uh, derivation which you can. So, the idea is let us say if you take the surface the mean, mean sea level or the surface at 0 kilometers height the pressure is if it is p naught and if the temperature is t naught what we can do is we can calculate the pressure at any height at any height let us say z and the temperature of that particular height t if the temperature of the atmosphere is varying with a uniform lapse rate of gamma. So, what is gamma? Gamma is minus d t over d z. What is this called as? This is called as the lapse rate of atmosphere that means it gives you the rate at which temperature decreases with height let us say we will do that. So, just to just to take a quick look back we started with the understanding of the basic idea of geopotential how do you define geopotential and using geopotential we we define g to be equal to the gradient of potential we reduced it to one dimension then we combined this with the gas equation then we got g dz is equal to minus rt d ln p then we integrated this into in between the suitable limits of height we got a relation in terms of uh, the in terms of the difference of geopotentials at the two different heights we converted this this geopotentials into geopotential heights thereby we realized that the geopotential heights or the thickness of an atmospheric layer in terms of its geopotential height boundaries was dependent on the temperature of this particular layer then we defined what is called as the average temperature of this layer and uh, this we this this allowed us to define scale height in terms of uh, average temperature times the gas constant divided by the gravity uh, uh, the gravitational pull at the at the surface or the normalized gravitational pull at the mean sea level then we, uh, we we realized that this could uh, this equation could could very well lead us to the very famous uh, variation of pressure with respect to height now what we are going to do now is we will derive a simple uh, relation for the height of a pressure surface i mean if you uh, if you if you know the pressure to be some millibar okay 300 millibar 200 millibar with the hydrostatic balance in place that means there are no variations in pressure horizontally where the pre pressure decreases exponentially only with respect to height 
So, we will define what will be the height of a given pressure P if you know the pressure at the surface to be P naught and the temperature at the surface to be T naught and this atmosphere, the atmospheric temperature with respect to height decreases uniformly with a lapse rate gamma, okay, with a uniform lapse rate or the constant lapse rate. So, we can define gamma is equals to dt over dz that means temperature at any given height is simply T naught minus gamma z. Right. So, if so what is what it means is that if the temperature T at z is equal to 0 is defined to be T naught, then temperature at any given height is simply this T naught minus gamma z and what is gamma? Gamma is dt over dz and we have assumed that this rate is uniform. I mean it is not there are no sudden changes in the in the atmospheric temperature. Okay. Now, the other equation that we will use is dp over dz is equals to minus rho g and p alpha is equals to rt. Right. Now, we will just rearrange this equation and uh, try to use this equation into this equation right? and so dp over dz is equals to in, in the place of rho we can write p by rt minus g which can be written as dp over p is equals to minus g by rt dz. That means, now if you substitute let us say let us call this equation 1 using equation 1 and let us call this, equ this set of equations as 2 and this equation as 3 using 1 in 3 we can say that dp over p is equals to minus g times r times t naught minus gamma z dz. Now, let us integrate this equation, integrate let us say this equation is 4. Integrate this equation between P naught that is P at z is equal to 0 and and P. What is P? Pressure at any given height. At any height, what is it? It is z. Right. Let us integrate this equation, which will look like integral P naught to P integral limits in terms of pressure is equals to minus g by r the constants come out and 0 to z to 1 by t naught minus gamma z and it is dz. Right. So, that means ln of p between p naught to p is equals to minus g by r into ln of t naught minus gamma z within 0 to z into minus 1 by gamma integrating this 1 by t naught minus gamma z. Okay. So, that means ln of p by p naught is equals to g by r gamma times ln t naught minus gamma z divided by t naught because because since at z is equal to 0 temperature is simply be simply equals to t naught right now if you simply rearrange this equation we can write p taking the logarithm to the right hand side t naught minus gamma z divided by t naught times g by r gamma or p by p naught r gamma by g 
is equals to T naught minus gamma z divided by T naught, right? P over P naught. I'm just rearranging the equations so that I'll simply get height at the end, right? So let's call this equation as five. And equation number 5 simply leads to writing height z as T naught by gamma into 1 minus P by P naught into R gamma by G. Let us simply write it for the sake of discussion. So, T naught by gamma to 1 minus p over p naught r gamma by g right now so what have we derived i mean we have derived an expression for the height where did we start we started we started with the hypsometric equation so hypsometric equation gives you the thickness of atmosphere that is separated between two pressure surfaces right now, if I know the pressure at the surface to be P naught and the temperature at the surface to be T naught and pressure of course decreases exponentially with respect to height, temperature can decrease linearly. If I take the linear variation or uniform variation of temperature with respect to height with a constant lapse rate gamma, then combining the hydrostatic equation and the gas equation, I got this. The pressure changes with respect to the height. Okay. I got this in terms of uh, this equation, then I integrated this equation between the suitable limits. So, my objective is to find uh, if I know the pressure at a particular height as P with respect to the pressure at the surface as P naught, then I want to find out this particular height in terms of P naught and T naught. Okay. So, at the end what I have uh, derived is the height of a pressure surface Z is T naught by gamma, what is gamma? Gamma is the lapse rate, T naught is the temperature at the surface, P by P naught into R gamma by G. Yes, right. So, this is a very important uh, derivation which, which we can use in combination with the hypsometric equation. Right. So, uh, so this is where we stop. So, uh, in the next class, we will try to continue the discussion by using the hypsometric equation and hydrostatic equilibrium. Uh, to understand the thermodynamical aspects of the atmosphere. Okay.